Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your relationship without your man's conscious effort, so you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today's podcast is all about how to be vulnerable in a relationship. My guest Siobhan's marriage was really, really, really lonely and felt like a roller coaster ride. She knew trust and respect were missing, but she didn't know how to get them back. But when she made a discovery about what respect really looked like to her husband, she says he went back to doing all the great things he did when they first fell in love. Today, she says she could cry because she feels so loved. She's going to tell us what she did so you can do it too. And then I'll be giving out the worst relationship advice of the week award, which is from a well-known syndicated columnist, and it is so disappointing. All of that's coming up, but first let's talk about how to be vulnerable in a relationship. First of all, why would you even want to be vulnerable in a relationship, right? Well, what I've found is that being vulnerable is magnetic. It's how I can show my beautiful, tender side, but that's not usually how it feels. I usually feel squishy and embarrassed or shy, and my instinct is to avoid that whenever possible. In other words, it's scary to be vulnerable. So it feels weird to be vulnerable on purpose, but that's my plan. Sounds crazy, right? Well, stick with me here. Because when it comes to your relationship, vulnerability may be the single most indispensable ingredient for creating intimacy. You simply cannot have intimacy without being vulnerable. But specifically, how do you do that? First, you'll need to be brave, in my experience. I used to think being vulnerable was the same as being weak, But now I know it takes strength and courage to open up and expose the tender parts of my heart to someone else. My experience is that other people are more inspired to help me and protect me when I'm unguarded and authentic. Whereas if I'm trying to seem tough, I don't need protection and I don't inspire any. If I'm projecting that I'm doing fine on my own, I don't inspire anyone else to help. If I'm never vulnerable, it's hard for my husband to know how he can take care of me or support me and delight me. That doesn't mean I have to be stuck in a well so that he can rescue me. The human condition is fragile enough. We're all vulnerable. It's just how we're made. Like the other day when we were standing at the construction site of our major house remodel and the contractor and his foreman and The engineer and my husband were all waiting for me to make a decision about the windows. And I was a big fat, I don't know, because I was feeling afraid to make a wrong decision that I would have to live with forever. And let's not forget, ever. So I turned to my husband and said, I can't decide now. And he immediately stepped in and said to everyone else, well, I'll communicate with you on this later. And to me, he said, everything is going to be fine. And then we left. What a relief. I had time to reflect on what I wanted. And I got to hear my husband's thoughts. And then the decision seemed easy. But that felt vulnerable. But it was also authentic. So being vulnerable for me doesn't mean being meek or submissive or acting like a doormat. In this example, they're all waiting to hear my desire. It does include letting go of thinking I should handle everything by myself or that I have to know everything because I don't. Being vulnerable includes saying I can't, even when I'm tempted to just tough it up or feel that I should be able to do it. And vulnerability often gives rise to the opportunity to receive help, which in turn makes my husband and I both feel happy. I feel taken care of and supported and he gets to be my hero, which he loves. Usually when I'm feeling tempted to respond with anger, it's a pretty good sign that I'm feeling vulnerable and I'm trying to cover it up. So instead of getting angry with my husband for spending too much time working or training for a marathon, I simply say, I miss you. 
Instead of responding with a clever, biting remark, if I feel hurt by his words, I can just say, ouch. It feels a lot more vulnerable than defending myself, but it creates a closeness and also a sacred trust. It's a way of saying, I trust you to hold me in safe hands. And it's a way of holding myself in safe hands by tending to my own feelings. I don't want to be that tough cookie that doesn't need anyone. So striving to be vulnerable allows my husband to shower his tenderness and his kindness on me. It's also magical to be vulnerable with my friends, with with other women, even with my students who also just want to support and help and protect me. I feel the sacred trust and connection from the other side with them when they're vulnerable with me. And because this is something that students of the intimacy skills and the connection framework are so good at, I get to experience that gratifying feeling a lot. I'm so grateful for the culture on our campus where we practice and celebrate vulnerability because we recognize it as courage. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. My guest Siobhan's marriage was really, really, really lonely. And it felt like a roller coaster ride. She knew trust and respect were missing, but she didn't know how to get them back. But when she made a discovery about what respect really looked like to her husband, she says he went back to doing all the great things he did when they fell in love. Today, she says she could cry because she feels so loved. She's going to tell us what she did so you can do it too. Siobhan, welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. Thank you so much for coming on to share your story. Hey, Laura. Thank you for having me. So what was your marriage like in the bad old days? Oh, my goodness. I think at this point we had been married for, it had just become three years, and we had just had our first child. And me and my husband are naturally close, so instantly felt it. So we were so, I mean, on top of lover's land. I mean, seriously, we're in lover's land um, when I was pregnant. And once I had the baby, I immediately got anxious about everything. It's like he couldn't do anything right. I mean, his breathing, even he couldn't even breathe. I was so controlling. It was absolutely ridiculous. And it literally sucked the air out of our relationship. Mm, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. I think that's kind of a common story with a new mom, right? That it feels like mm-hmm. such an important job. I remember one husband was telling me he couldn't even wash the bottles the right way, the baby bottles the right way. So, okay. So, (laughs) so, and it sucked all the air out. So, um, so what kind of interactions were you having after the baby was born? I think the biggest thing for us when we got home from the hospital, I mean, and I tell you no lie, Laura, I, I think we got home from the hospital. We had a good week. And then after that, I could almost time every argument. It's like we have a good two weeks and then the next two weeks we'll have a big argument. And then we'll have a good three weeks and then the next two weeks, I could almost time it. Felt like we knew each other, but we were trying to figure out how to be lovers and parents now because we were just only lovers. And so that was really, really, really hard. The interaction was always like eggshells. And I know it was... Back then, I didn't know it was me, but it just always felt like we were both walking on eggshells. Yeah, you probably just wondered, what the heck happened? Why why did this start? So was there a moment when you thought, well, we can't go on like this? Definitely. I hope you have the time. (laughs) (laughs) It was was, just crazy. Um, So I'll say this is exactly what happened. 
the steps of everything. So after we had our baby again, I say like every two, three weeks, we were getting a really big fight and the fights started getting bigger. I mean, they got larger and larger, more intense. I mean, horrible. Um, and I also want to throw in there, me and my husband are both very passionate and we're passionate about each other. We got married in 10 months. And I wish I would have married the guy sooner, but then everyone would have probably thought we were crazy, but um, we're just very passionate people. So you put that and you mix it with misunderstanding and anger. It just was absolutely crazy. So what I did was um, I start listening to your podcast before I even bought a book. I started listening to your podcast and I was... I was like, hmm, she has a way of doing things very differently. It's like a softer approach. I'm going to try. So I started listening to this podcast and I would try to say I'm sorry when I was wrong and things like that. I still hadn't clicked on with the respect thing. But, you know, I started listening to your podcast. Then I brought your book and I was like, okay. I'm learning new things. Why don't I create a book club? So I created a book club. Yeah, because your first book, The Surrender Wife, is like examples of how to lead a book club, which is like perfect for me. I'm a teacher, Laura, so I'm like, <laughs> let me teach others, even if I don't know what I'm doing. Let me ah, teach others. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I started a book club, and we got through the first book. Now, may I remind you, doing the book, I was like, okay, this is respect. I did not know that not telling him what to do was respect. Why did I ever think of this? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Maybe I should tell him how to brush his teeth. I mean, maybe that is crossing the line a little bit. So yeah, that first book definitely opened my eyes to what respect was. Um, and so after the first book, I started the second book. And right before we started the second book, we got in the, this was the largest fight we've ever gotten in to the point where my husband, oh, I don't want to cry. But my husband um, told me, well, if you can't respect and love me, why don't you just, why don't you just leave? Because I'm miserable. Like, it's like I'll see glimmers of hope because you're reading your book and you're doing so good. And then I'll see you just, you get worse. And he had never said, he had never, my husband has never, ever, we've had arguments before. He had never mentioned leaving me. Hmm. or me leaving him he never mentioned it so I know when he said I was like okay like this has to stop and that's when I knew okay we can't go on like this so yeah Oof, awful that's like a stab in the heart so what did you do then well, what ended up happening is I, I I looked at coaching I really wanted to do coaching but I knew we were trying to get out of this so I had to I had to kind of think of this because even at this time, I had relinquished control of the finances. Hmm. So, in yeah, so I had done that. And he was like, baby, we could do it eventually, but we have to get out of debt first. And so I said, okay, the second book, I feel like saved me. That was what like literally saved me. So when I started the second book, it's like I had, like I was reborn when I read the second book because my eyes really opened. So this is, you know, I started seeing wife? my husband as a man. Yes. The empowered wife. And I start seeing my husband as a man. He's going to handle things like a man. He's going to respond like a man. He's going to, we have a blended family. And so he has to co-parent. He's going to co-parent like a man. He's going to handle the children like a man. He's not, a woman. I didn't marry a woman. So, you know, I don't know why the whole time I was getting the respect part down, but the seeing my husband and respecting my husband as a man part is what changed everything, everything. So yeah, that was what, what changed. Wow. So, but, so when you started seeing him, uh, with your baby, for instance, being, being a dad, not acting like a mom, right? Cause Right. Different. God gave you a mom and a dad for a reason, probably, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so how would you respond differently to that than you had been? I think in your book, it's so amazing. I must sometimes I think I say, does Laura have like a hundred kids? Because this works <laughs> out. Like she, 
<laughs> she knows every scenario. And the Aww. crazy thing about it, <laughs> the, the most amazing thing about it for me, Laura, was I seen how my husband had, he was, he was not a mother, but he didn't have to be. He was so perfect. He's so perfect. Like the kids need that extra tough love. And then he's sender. It's like, he is the right combination of a father. And I felt a, re- a huge disservice stepping in and telling him how to p- a parent. When matter mind you, my husband had children before I came along. So he's actually better at it than me. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> he's got more on the job training than you, yeah. right? More experience. Yes, yeah. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Very good. So, so was there a moment when you thought, okay, this is really working. Things are definitely different when you were using the skills. Absolutely. Um, this is the part where you, so just a little background about me, Laura. I love Beyonce. Like I think if I see Beyonce, I, I like pass out. Okay. So now <laughs> you're, you're, you're ahead of Beyonce, Laura. Like <laughs> you're up there. You're, you're ahead of Beyonce. It's, <laughs> this is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is where I, really start telling everyone that I knew about you like everyone that I knew about you and and I think it was when I had the blinking like moment of realizing that my husband was a man I went back and I started looking back at the second, the first book and start connecting everything like okay a part in your first book says even the best mother can't be a father that is I mean, pairing that with the second book, I start letting him parent. And then I start, um, you know, really stepping back with the finances because I had relinquished control, but I still would kind of do that questioning that we talk about, you know, and I've stopped that. I stopped that. And then I also start keeping like my thoughts to myself. Like if it wasn't going to help him, I, I just didn't. I would say the biggest change that I made which blessed me was I start putting my husband on a pedestal. Mm. I start thinking like the best of my husband, like, and I start seeing it like my spouse fulfilling prophecy. I always keep that in the back of my head. What is it? Well, the yeah, my, my spouse fulfilling prophecy is my husband does everything in his power to make my life easy. Oh, that's he does. Yeah. But he does does. too. He does. Right. For you. I love it. I love it. So this is, and this is truly the essence of respect. You're seeing the best, expecting the best from him and then finding evidence, kind of keeping your focus on all the ways um, he tries to make your life better. That's Mm -hmm. great. That's Mm -hmm. So what's your relationship like now? Are you still having these fights every two weeks? No. 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 Okay. We have little moments where we have, like you, I love in your book how you make us feel human. You know, you you live in close proximity. So you're going to have little moments where you rub up against each other. And when we do, it's quick. It's a quick fix. I'm sorry for being disrespectful. And he's so loving. He'll come and give me a kiss. It's okay. Oh, <laughs> sweet. Sweet. Yeah, he's so sweet. He's so sweet. Um, But it's dates. I mean... I like I said, I've been reborn. I take stellar care of myself now. I'm I've mm-hmm. lost since I've started this, maybe in the last five, six months, I've lost like 15 pounds. Wow. Um, yes, I am making sure I keep my nails. It's like I'm it's self-care. It's like I'm dating myself. Yes. So I'm like having a relationship with myself yes. over here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then like my husband, yeah. But Aww. he loves it. He loves it. I keep Aww. up with him. Aww. Yes. Yes. So it sounds like there's a lot of sweetness. And then in that moment where he was saying, well, why don't you leave? Um, Mm -hmm. Kind of shakes Mm -hmm. your confidence, right? In your marriage. Um, Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. how how confident do you feel now? Or does that still come up? No, no. When I really put the six intimacy skills in place and do daily check-ins, because this is still new to me. I think the last... Five, six months is really when we've seen, we haven't had an argument. We haven't. And I used to be so afraid, Laura. Like, you know, I'm like, man, when's the next argument going to happen? When's the next moment 
big moment where I'm going to question, am I even supposed to be married? Did we get married too fast? Like, and it hasn't happened. It Mm. hasn't happened. Like, and I can see it not ever happening because I know now how to control myself. I know now the power that I have. And this man wants to do another 60 years with me. Okay. Oh. So yeah, I, another, we've only been married for four years, but he wants to, he wants to be here. He's not moving. So, I mean, it's just amazing that I have the skills now. Now I have, I have the power. So no, those, those thoughts don't come up at wow. all. Love that. Well, what's your tip for somebody who's maybe where you were? Maybe she's got a new baby and a blended family and these arguments are coming up regularly and she's feeling scared, Uh, but she wants what you have where she just feels so uh, loved Mm -hmm. and secure. Where should she start? What's, What's your best tip for her? Oh, it's so many. It's so many. I would say this. I would say with the new mom, don't try to be a super mom. I know like it's in us to be super women, but when you first have a baby, everything's so tender. Like your heart's so tender. Your 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 confidence is so fragile because your body's not the same. Um, the last thing on your mind is taking care of yourself, but take care of yourself. <laughs> like, you know, take a moment to, you know, take a bath, but really take care of yourself. Take care of yourself before you take care of the dishes. My dishes are so tall right now in the sink. And they're going to be there for a little while, Laura, because I'm not going over there. I'm not doing the dishes at least for another two days. But those things don't (laughs) define you. (laughs) They don't define you as a wife Mm -hmm. or a mom. You know, how you show up and how loving and how kind you are is what defines that. So just take care of yourself. That'll be the biggest tip. That is beautiful. So if I came over to your house right now, I would see a sack of dishes, but I'd see a happy Siobhan in a loving yes. house with a good marriage. Yes. And that seems like a good trade, right? So I yes. love that. What What would you say to Siobhan if you could go back and tell her what you know now? What would you say to her? Man, I remember, I remember being in that place and I thought I was happy. I really thought I was happy because I had just had a baby and my little, oh, my little pudding, you should see her. First of all, <laughs> she is, she's a whole human being. Okay. She's like, it's so crazy. I love her, but I thought I was happy, but I was not grateful. I wasn't grateful. I didn't know how much gratitude could really exemplify everything that you have. I did. I had, I had it all and I was still looking, I was still searching, but I didn't really know where, where to look, you know, for happiness, you know? So I would tell Siobhan, girl, first of all, just go, go lotion your feet. Okay. Because it's been a little while since you put a little bit of lotion on. Take care of yourself. (laughs) I would just tell myself to take care of myself. Um, because if I'm honest, Laura, when I look back, I did not take care of myself. And that was the problem. And when I first started reading your book, that was one of the things that you said, self-care. I said, what self-care got to do with my relationship? But it was true. It was true. Having that self-care is, is going to help you be calm and it's going to help you show up better. And I would just tell myself to take care of myself because that's what I would tell myself. Ah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations on just uh, diving into the skills, using the book, and it sounds like even creating other women that are practicing them with you by sharing sharing it in a book club and really transforming your family, right? Could have gone down uh, a path that would have been, you know, pretty tragic, yeah. really, right? Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and uh, so, and you single-handedly, uh, put it right. It sounds like really fixed your family by taking care of yourself, being grateful, being respectful. Uh, so I admire that so much. So yes. well done. Thank you. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. 
just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. And now it's time for the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week Award. It's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week. Worst Relationship Advice. Yeah, it's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week. And the advice I'm most apoplectic about this week was sent to me by a student with a sharp eye for this kind of thing. And she captioned it with the words, worst relationship advice ever. And I completely agree. Thanks for sending this to me for award consideration. It floated right to the top of the pile of worst advice this week. I'm giving you this grateful anonymous shout out for your contribution and support. So thanks. This truly terrible advice she sent me is from a syndicated columnist. The advice is for a woman who says her husband retired and she has to take care of all their responsibilities because he isn't contributing at all. And she's feeling resentful and angry about this as one would, right? But she is also accountable in asking for advice by saying, can you give me any advice to help me get out of this trap I've built for myself? I've never had the nerve to speak up and express my anger or frustration for fear of getting into a huge fight. I love her accountability. That is so big. It takes so much humility and courage to say, there's a huge problem here. And also I'm responsible for it. I did it to myself. So disarming, right? So already I love this wife. And I relate to her because I too was resentful and angry that I had to do everything. And I too felt so stuck. So wait till you hear how the famous columnist responded to this wife. So discouraging. She writes, ending your silence is the way out of the trap. It is what has given him license. If necessary, have that huge fight. It may be the answer to a more equitable sharing of responsibilities. But if it isn't, then it's time for counseling to not only help you better communicate, but also, if necessary, mediate. First, let's have a moment of silence to be flabbergasted by this. I mean, I don't need to tell you that this advice is suggesting that instead of continuing down this highway of accountability she's already started on, which, by the way, is a surprising road to empowerment, accountability, this overburdened wife should instead just drive directly into victim swamp and start a huge fight with her husband. Because starting a huge fight is the very best way to make things more equitable. Well, there's also a subtext that the husband is wrong and bad. Like, The wife is being victimized by him and his laziness, but she's not being victim-y enough about it herself, which is why she needs to bring in a counselor or a mediator who can perform the service of pointing it out to him for her. So to follow this logic, once the counselor or mediator has pointed out this man's shortcomings and his laziness to him, he will then, and only then, See the error of his ways. Jump up off the couch and start cleaning the dishes, folding the laundry, and making all their meals because that's how it works. Hey, wouldn't it be a wonderful world if when you told someone what was wrong with them, they didn't realize, they immediately straightened up and they were much better in that area? Maybe this advice is from a parallel universe where that's true. But in this universe, that never works. What I'd love to invite this wife to do, who sounds a lot like I used to, is to try being vulnerable 
just like we talked about at the top of this podcast. What if she said, I'm overwhelmed with the housework. I can't do it all. Or what if she invited her husband to be her hero by figuring out what it is she desires? Like maybe she wants to retire herself or maybe she wants a clean kitchen. Maybe she wants him to uh, you know, help with some of the other responsibilities and she could express that desire in a way that inspires him instead of making him the bad guy. And I wonder, you know, I just wonder how her receiving skills are doing. I wonder how she is at receiving. Is she unwittingly turning away his offers for help because she feels guilty not doing things herself? Or maybe she wants them done her way? Those were some of the ways I made myself the kitchen elf early in my marriage, but not anymore. Now, I just thank my husband for cleaning the kitchen every single day. He jumps up to do it because he knows it makes me happy. No big fight is necessary, and those certainly aren't fun. Plus, they never got me the desired result anyway, which is why this advice to say, if necessary, have that huge fight. It may be the answer to a more equitable sharing of responsibilities, but if it isn't, then it's time for counseling is the very, very worst relationship advice I've heard all week. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week's podcast, I'm going to share three insights from 20 years of empowering wives to be ridiculously happy. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that I don't spend a dime on coffee or cigarettes, but I confess that this summer I have developed a $9 a day addiction to cut watermelons.